my course, Game Development Basics, Week 1, Lesson 8, Creating a Level in Unreal Engine. In this lesson, we're going to describe the purpose of a level in Unreal Engine, describe the tools available in Unreal Engine for creating prototype levels, and demonstrate some level creation in Unreal Engine. Up until now, we've been using this default level that comes whenever you start a blank project, but we want to be able to start creating our own level so we can develop the gameplay of our game. For that, we'll need to create a level. In Unreal Engine, every object that a player interacts with is contained in a level. This includes every static mesh, light, volume, blueprint, everything is contained within a level. And levels can vary in size depending on the needs of your game. So you can have one gigantic level where everything's all together, or you can have smaller levels that break up the various scenes into more manageable chunks. It really comes down to the needs of your game. And if you already have a lot of assets for your game, you can start putting those into your level in Unreal Engine, but I find it's usually best by starting with a prototype. So when starting a new level, it's a good design practice to just block out all of the gameplay using prototyping tools. This means using primitives like cubes and spheres and cylinders or geometry brushes, which we'll also discuss. Most games require more than one level, so it's necessary to be able to move between levels during gameplay. And as we've talked about, some assets are loaded into a level and cannot be reassigned once the level is loaded. But some assets are persistent between levels, like the game instance, which gets loaded every time you launch the game and isn't destroyed until you close the game. So let's demonstrate some level creation in Unreal Engine. Here we are back in our game, Ball Maze, and if I right click in the content browser, it gives me the option to create a new level here. And I can type and call this level one. If we double click it, it'll ask us to save it. And when we open it, we can see it's just a dark blank level. We can go to shapes and drag a cube in, and we can see that the cube is on our level, but we can't see it. We need some light. If we go to the lighting tab, we can take a directional light and also drag that in and now we can see our cube in the world but there is a better way if we go to file new level it gives us some templates to choose from and I'm going to choose basic this will have all the lighting components set up we're not going to talk about lighting in this level so we can just bypass all of that by creating a basic level you can also see that there's an open world empty open world and empty level, which the empty level is the one that we just created. So let's create a basic level and we can see a little bit better in this one. Now this level has some basic components in it. It has a directional light, which we already set up. It has some fog, atmosphere, skylight, sky sphere, volumetric clouds, and then it has a floor for us to start building our level. If we press play, we can see that our ball is spawned into the level and we can start moving it around. But we want to be able to control where the ball spawns into the level. If we go to this basic tab, we can drag a player start and this will set where the player spawns into the level. Now our goal though is to create a maze and for that we're just going to use some primitive shapes for now. We can drag a cube into the world and if we drag it up, here's a little shortcut, hit the end key and it will automatically place it on the ground. And there we have our cube and we can see that it has some collision enabled so we can't pass through it. Now we can just create a million of these cubes and create a maze this way. We can also scale the cube. And make some walls this way. Or we can also use what's called geometry brushes. Geometry brushes are great for blocking out a level because you can assign the size of the brush down here in the brush settings. And I'll show you why this is relevant. If I start with my cube here and I assign a material, for this I'll use um, one of these bricks. We can see here that I now have like a nice brick cube. 
But if I want this cube to be larger and I start stretching it, you'll notice that the bricks are stretching along with that. On the other hand, if I take that same brick and I put it on my box brush, and then I change the value here, you'll notice that the texture automatically stretches to match the walls. And I can put it on all of the sides. And there we have a nice wall. Now we can continue to drag these into the scene and create a bunch of walls. We can also click on a wall that we've already created, hold the Alt key, and drag off one of these arrows and it will create a duplicate. So if we wanted to create like a long channel like this, we could do it that way. And so at this point, you can just start blocking out your level. And so for this, we're gonna have our first challenge. I want you to design your first maze level in Unreal Engine. And just a hint, there's gonna be multiple maze levels and we want them to increase in difficulty so the first one should be quite simple, maybe just only one or two branches. In a future lesson, we're gonna set up subsequent levels and the player is gonna be transported through each of them. So every time you design a level, you need to have an awareness of where you want the endpoint to be. Take some time to do this and I'll see you back once our first levels are complete. All right, so hopefully you had fun creating your first maze. I'm here and you can see mine. I just have one branch left or right and one of them's a dead end and one of them will lead to this cylinder which I set up as to be the endpoint. Another quick little tip, if you have an actor selected in the viewport, you can press F and the viewport will zoom in on that. This is especially good if you don't know where something is in the level, you can find it in your outliner, press F and it will snap to that place in the level. And I also found in the content, starter content materials, there are quite a few materials. I wanted to have my ground be a little bit different, so I'm gonna take this ground, I'm gonna drag it in, and now I have a nice grass, which allows the walls to stand out a little bit more. And that's gonna pretty much sum up this lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk about collision and physics, which is what we're gonna to use to finish out transporting to the next level. And we're almost wrapped up with our very first project.